do some conductor distance calculations. So this is based on table D3, found in Appendix D of your codebook. And so we'll get right into it. There's some definite um, interesting things about this table, and we'll get right into that. Take a look at what those are. Okay, so first is, um, we'll go through the scenario. We have a 22 amp a load, it's a 240 volt cattle water, and it's wire distance from the barn panel is 63 meters. So we're going to feed this with some NMWU, and we want to know what AWG size we're going to need for that because of the distance that's involved. All termination temperatures are 90, it mentions there. And again, does that, does that play a role in our question? Because if we look at the NMWU, and go to table 19, we'll see that yes, that is a direct burial cable, but it is only good for 60 degrees Celsius. So that becomes our new default and these 90 degree temperatures really don't mean much. So let's go to table D3 and take a look at that. So this is our table. Um, it's a bit of a different type of a table here. There's got lots of blank areas over here. That's just because uh, the numbers don't work in those columns here for the size of the cable or conductor that we have across here. Um, so this is all in meters down in here. This this is sort of a variable section in here. Uh, these are your currents along the side here, the left-hand column here is your currents. And you'll notice that they don't have every single current listed here. And the one that we're concerned with at 22 amps actually doesn't have a listing here. It has a 20 and a 25. So we'll figure out which one we're going to use of those two. And then we also have our AWG size across the top here. And those kind of, they correspond to conductor sizes that we would see. Um, well, I guess starting at 14 AWG. They, they have an 18 and a 16 listed here as well. But those are your, your common wire sizes. And it just goes up to 4 aught. And another thing to note about this particular table, 120 volts. So everything has to be 120 volts, and it only allows for a 1% voltage drop. So that's going to be a little bit tricky with the information that we have in our table, or our scenario. Because again, it's 240 volts. And you'll notice that our table in D3 is only for 120 volt and 1% volt drop applications. So we have to make our scenario fit. Taking a look at this table again, though, the biggest thing that we work with is the distance, right? And that's that's brought out here. That's what the table mentions, the distance. So we're looking at the meters, and that's what we really want to try to make fit. We want to make the, the 63 meters that we have in our, our wire length match uh, a, a distance that we have in here. So how do we do that? Well, what we want to do is work with those meters and make our scenario fit. So we do that by taking our voltage and taking a look at it in comparison to the voltage that the table is good for. So since 240 volts is twice as much as 120, working with our meters, we're going to cut those meters in half. Because again, 240 divided by 120 is, is 2. And we're going to divide that same 63 meters by 2. And it's because 240 volts is going to give us higher electrical pressure and push the electrons down that conductor at a uh, stronger rate than 120 would. So we actually get more distance with 240, but if we're trying to match it to this table, then we have to cut it in half. And then our new meters that we're looking for is 31 and a half meters if we're looking at it as a 120 volt load. But that's not it. We're not done. This table, again, is only good for a 1% drop. We have, or we're allowed by code, a 3% drop for this branch circuit, which, again, being fed out of a panel makes it a branch circuit, and we're allowed a 3% drop. So, again, we'll reduce that length again, um, this time by 3 for the percent difference drop. So that's what it's going to look like. So take this already reduced distance here, Again, divide it by three. And so this now becomes the distance on our table that we're going to look for because we've matched or, or made 
our 63 meters fit something that, that is applicable to table D3. So as I mentioned before, um, we're going to go across on a current row and try to find a distance that exceeds 10 and a half meters, but which row do we use? So since 22 amps falls between 20 and 25, we don't want to go with a lower current. We actually want to go with the higher current to just to make sure that we're, we're safe. So we're going to go to the next higher value, which would be our, our 25. And that's what we see here. 25, well, sort of underlined, 25 amp row here. And we go across until we exceed 10.5. 9.9 is close, but not close enough. So we go to 15.7. And that takes us up to a number six. Okay. Notice, though, that an eight, a number eight is a 9.9. What does that mean? Well, when we're looking at those two columns, you can see that 9.9 .9 meters is actually closer to 10.5 than 15.7 that a number six is good for. So can we try to make the 9.9 .9 meters work? Is there a way? Well, we have further on in table D3, on the next page, we have a distance correction factor table that looks something like this so these are our multipliers this is what we would multiply the the distance that we're we're looking at so whatever the cable says so in our case um, we had a 9.9 .9 allowable meter distance on the number eight and a 15.7 on the number six well, if we're trying to get a number eight, we would figure out which one of these multipliers and we would multiply it by the 9.9. .9. Okay. This here is the percentage of the allowable opacity. So how great have we loaded up our cable or conductor that we want to use as opposed to how much it's actually allowed to carry. Okay. And then these are the rated temperatures of the conductors. So in our case, we're using NMWU. So, First thing we got to do is if we're trying to go to a number eight, we have to figure out what the opacity of that number eight is and then figure out what the percent difference is between the load that we're going to place upon it and what the opacity of the cable is that we would like to use. So we have to go to table two for that. So let's take a look at table two. And again, remembering that it's NMWU and it's only good for 60 degrees Celsius. We have to go down this column here, and a number eight is good for 40 amps. So now that we know that, and we know what our load is, because we've got that in our scenario here, 22 amps divided by 40 is 0.55 times that by 100, and it gives us a 55% loading of our cable. So let's go back to the uh, DCF table and take a look at that. So we go a lot across here percentage of allowable opacity well we don't have a 55 we have a 50 and a 60. look up here at this bullet point here oh, it's not a bullet point i just put an arrow there it says where the calculation and the allowable opacity fall between two columns the factor in the higher percentage column shall be used so it tells us that we just go to the next higher column when it falls between two of these values even if it was 51 percent we'd go to the 60. okay our rated conductor temperature, again, is 60. We go across here until we get to this value here. So this becomes our multiplier. Okay. So we have our multiplier, and we know what our distance from table D3 is for a number 8 is 9.9. 9.9 times 1.07 works out to 10.593 meters. So this exceeds our earlier calculated distance of 10.5 meters. So for this 22 amp cattle water, we actually can get away with using a number eight NMWU. So this may have, by using this distance correction factor, could have uh, saved us a little bit of uh, cost in our wire. So this is something to, to keep into uh, mind. You want to do always do your distance correction factor just to see if you can get away with it. It's only going to ever bump you up 
one uh, conductor size or down one conductor size, one smaller size, um, or it may not at all. So you have to make sure that you use this to make sure that you do your questions correctly. Or any situation in the future when you become a journeyman, you'll, you will definitely want to use this table when you're doing long runs um, and just to make sure that you do not have too great of a voltage drop in your conductor. So this is scenario one, as I mentioned here. We'll go into some other scenarios uh, where we actually use an aluminum conductor. We'll see what we have to do for that.